Hello and welcome back. Let's welcome in the management at Jindal Stainless now. Mr. Vijay Sharma, director of Jindal Stainless is now uh, with us. Mr. Sharma, thank you so much for taking out time for us. Of course, when we talk about Q1, it was a washout sort of a quarter, not only for you, but for everyone. But can you just talk to us about the trend that is going on in the stainless market? That is in June when we opened, uh, in July when things opened further, and of course, August and September. Uh, how are things looking? Uh, good afternoon, Pankaj, and thanks for me having here. Uh, well, uh, like everybody else, Q1 has been a disaster for most of the companies in the country. But uh, uh, I would like to share some statistical analysis. You see, in Q1, Y and Y, we did about 31% of the sale uh, versus the Q1 of last financial year. Beca but if I break it into the months, practically April was washout. And when we reached June, it uh, we were able to reach about 55% of the Y and Y quarter one average of the month. And uh, post this uh, Q1 quarter, July was close to 75%. And August even uh, closer to what we were doing in the last Q1 uh, in financial year 1920. So the things are improving and it is true for most of the uh, our customer base and other parts of the, uh, whether it is a steel fraternity or stainless steel fraternity. So things are better, but yes, we have to be very, very cautious because the localized lockdowns uh, and also a lot of uh, major portion in the supply chain of stainless steel, uh, MSMEs are there and also in the ecosystem where the last mile connectivity uh, with the customer is also through the MSME uh, converters and the manufacturers. So MSME being having a sort of a disadvantage of the labor intensive and all. So the industry is little careful about the COVID. Uh, otherwise, the things look to be bright. And if I talk about uh, the reasons of this brightness, you see, uh, there are uh, various growth areas uh, which uh, for which uh, stainless steel goes into. There have been certain stable uh, segments like railways, architecture, building construction, food industry. Some industries came back which were not that prominent even in the Q4 and in the last Q3 like auto and utensils. New opportunities are coming up in terms of the health and medical industry, uh, which includes hospital beds, ventilators. And of course, uh, the announcements related with the building up of the infrastructure, whether it is through NIP and all. So those are the areas where stainless steel is the most appropriate metal, whether uh, because it is a sustainable solution and on the lifestyle costing, what the government of India is emphasizing to have a very, very long term solutions. So I strongly feel that uh, the comeback is much, much better than the setback we had in Q1. Right. Uh, you know, so when we talk about exports, how big an opportunity is that now? You know, considering that China was ruling the steel world in all uh, the major areas as well. Uh, can you just tell us, you know, this anti-China theme across or, you know, having more than one sources uh, for major players, how will the company benefit from that? Yeah, you see, I will put this question into two parts. Once first you talked about exports. You see, we have been having a very, very long term, uh, very, very strong relations with the, um, our customers in the international uh, uh, areas. Uh, during this Q1, uh, when there was a possibility uh, of exporting, we were able to rebuild that trust and we were able to increase the uh, volumes in exports uh, to compensate for, uh, to some extent, what we could not sell in domestic. So those opportunities definitely exist because our behavior have been very, very consistent in the exports. Now coming to uh, the domestic front, you see domestic is our passion. And de yeah, definitely, yes, uh, China has been creating the problems, but uh, the space created by the Chinese will not only give the advantage to companies like us, but also, like I said earlier, uh, the various manufacturers in the supply chain as well as the demand side also, they are also going to benefit out of it. However, uh, there is a very, very unfortunate situation because when we talk about China, it is not only Chinese origin, it is the Chinese material made from Chinese investment for, from other parts of the world. And also um, the issue of the circumvention of the Chinese origin, either made in China or made by Chinese investment, they are finding a route through circumvention into India. Well, uh, we are thankful to government of India for Atam Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan and also very clear uh, focus on uh, that to, to uh, increase the GDP to three to five, make in India instead of trade of India. That is the theme. And uh, yes, government is recognizing that uh, Indian manufacturers need a level playing field because the uncompetitiveness sort of is more uh, uh, is a country competitiveness. If I talk about only two aspects of the cost, whether it is a cost of capital, uh, which is about five to six percent higher than those countries where we have to compete against, or we talk about the logistics, which at about 14 to 15 percent of the GDP again adds to five to six percent in the non-competitiveness. 
So these two elements alone makes the Indian manufacturers, and uh, I'm not talking about only stainless steel. I'm talking about practically every manufacturer in the country less competitive by 10 to 12 percent. So there is a need of a more stronger and faster level playing field. Yes, government is recognizing it, and we are very hopeful that at the right speed, uh, the uh, support to the domestic industry only for the level playing field will be provided. Okay, I just wanted to also get in a sense as to what the outlook is uh, when it comes to the festive demand because we are seeing an uptick in the two-wheeler segment, there's a likely improvement in the retail segment. Do you think that demand is gearing up in the steel industry as we are heading towards the festive season? Yes, I will specifically be talking about the stainless steel. You see, uh, 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 you might have noticed that stainless steel, uh, the, uh, the uh, projections from my company had been very, very consistent. Uh, about uh, two, three months back, even uh, during the mid-COVID uh, uh, lockdown, we had projected that by September or so, uh, the levels will come back to uh, the pre-COVID levels and we are seeing that. And uh, uh, that's a very heartening news because September onwards, uh, the uh, festival season starts. Uh, we are uh, very satisfied to know the growth in the automobiles, specifically two-wheelers. Utensils are also showing and also uh, the welded pipe and tube segment which is practically going into every uh, segment in the stainless steel usage, whether it is architecture, building construction, or it is process, even automobile. So these are the areas which are growing very, very positive uh, 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 signals. And uh, we feel that uh, September onwards, provided there is no localized COVID uh, lockdowns like issues, uh, there is going to be stable and improved demand. However, once again, I would like to say this demand is only possible to be stable and consistent if uh, the uh, India being the second largest consumer of stainless steel, there is a, a proper trade remedial level playing actions initiated and implemented uh, by the government of India. Okay, and uh, moving on, you know, how do you help us understand the pricing difference in the domestic market versus the international market with the changing market dynamics? You see, uh, I would like to give a comment that uh, if we look around uh, in the last two and a half years, uh, practically every country in the world has started thinking about the nationalism. So to me, it has become from globalization to nationalism. There are lots of trade remedial actions being uh, initiated by uh, all those uh, countries where their stainless steel production is there, whether you talk about the USA or you talk about EU and even uh, the China, which used to be the biggest threat, has got threatened by Indonesia. So every country is protecting its own country and pricing is a matter of various demand supply situation and also the indices. Generally speaking, we being a local player and because our services, everything, we get a premium over the imported material depending on what origin, what quality the material is. And when we export, definitely uh, there is always some discounting, but I'm very happy to tell you that our discounting in countries like Europe is much less than our getting premium in the domestic. So it is situational. Uh, we were able to uh, do some exports because of our behavior during the uh, COVID lockdown period and also because of our relationship and the customer having trust on us. But our first priority is uh, serving the domestic industry. Mr. Sharma, thank you for sharing with us the outlook and giving us insight as to how trends are shaping up for the company, the demand revival in the steel industry, as well as your strategy to take on the pandemic. Let's get a move on then and actor, producer and now